welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own culture of springtails. So springtails are small, soft body arthropods and are just part of the microfauna that is really handy if you want a bioactive setup or just a simple cleanup crew. In the wild, these guys will feed on things like leaf litter, decaying matter, fungi, mold, you name it. So that really helps keep down fungi and like mold in your enclosures. I know a lot of you guys keep snails and a lot of you guys really enjoy my snail content. And these guys, I think, are like a necessity in your snail enclosure because they will keep back any mold or fungus that grows from the moisture that you need in the enclosure. Springtails come in all shapes and sizes and also temperaments. So you can have some that are more tropical. You can even have some that will live in a more arid environment. Here, I just have some temperate white springtails. So if you're wondering what this one is, this is actually a new culture and it is from Smugbug, but it was bought at the pet store and they're temperate whites. They are on clay. I won't be going through clay setups right now. I will be going through the charcoal method um, because the charcoal method to me I think is easier. I've never actually done the clay method so maybe later on I'll do the clay method but for now we're just focusing on charcoal um, and here is my colony of temperate whites here and I will actually be putting them in this. So springtails are very, very simple to care for and little to no concern on your part if you're not much of a bug person. They are very tiny, but they can't fly, they can't bite you, they can't harm in any way, they can't really damage your house at all. Uh, you probably have these somewhere in your yard. If you do find them in your house, there's probably a bigger moisture problem and if you fix that problem, they'll go away. They're not going to cause any damage to your house if they do get out though. Um, so I, they're not a concern for, for you to have. These guys can live in room temperature. Uh, mine stay a little bit warmer because they're in with my animals. So in my room it's relatively hot and so these guys do stay a little warmer which is fine. I've heard they can also be at room temperature. Just don't let it get too cold and you should be good. So let's talk about the setup size. So I have this simple cup. These are ones that I got a couple of my histers out of um, and it worked really well. I don't like the more shallow ones, but since it was such a small culture, I went ahead and just used it for now, but they will be getting transferred into these, which I do prefer more. Um, just a plastic one will work. This does have ventilation holes in it. You don't need ventilation holes. You actually want a tight fitting lid to avoid any mite infestations that you might get. As long as you open it up once a day to not let the monoxide build up or anything. But you do want a tight fitting lid here. So your springtails will live on charcoal. So what kind of charcoal do you put it on is pretty important. So what I use to culture my springtails is just some simple lump wood charcoal. You can get it in any grilling section really. And you get a big bag of it for like $14. So you want 100% natural lump wood charcoal. This will go a long way and you can just use it for grilling if you don't use the whole bag. You don't want to use things like barquettes or anything because they will have chemicals on it that you do not want for your culture. You can also use horticultural charcoal or activated carbon for your culture. I've never used these options, but I'm putting it out there just in case they're not as cost effective. Again, I've never used them, but I have heard they do have success. So if you have some on hand, there you go. Just make sure there is no added chemicals. So the only thing about lump charcoal is that it can come in some pretty big pieces that you are going to want to break up. You can simply do this with a hammer. Definitely wear a respirator and goggles, maybe gloves even. I don't worry about the gloves, obviously. But you definitely want to do that and break it up. You can put it in a pillowcase. Uh, I actually normally hammer the top of this before I even open it, <laughs> to be honest with you. But yeah, you can break these up into smaller pieces like this or even smaller if you need. So, so now let's go ahead and set up a new culture of springtails. So what you want to do is you just want to take your lump charcoal and put it in there. You just want a decent amount, give them some good surface area to climb on and exist on, you know. You can also rinse off the charcoal first if you want to. I never do, but you can. So that's pretty much the amount that I put in there. You can have a little bit less if you want, but that's what I do. My counter is getting so dirty. <laughs> um, and next you just want to fill a half inch to maybe an inch of water 
in your culture container. So I use distilled water. Um, I heard that you can just use tap. I would definitely dechlorinate it first, get like rub to safe or something. Um, I just use distilled. I've never had another water because my frog's mister needs it anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour that in. I put a little bit more than I needed to in it, but that's okay. And then you can just put your lid on it for a minute to let that charcoal get hydrated, maybe clean your hands a little bit, um, and then add it in your springtails. All right, so how are we going to put these guys in here? There's a few methods, one of which you can just take um, a piece of your charcoal and you can put it in there and they'll probably start their, their thing in there. Um, another way is to just simply pour like this to the edge and they will normally jump in if you have enough. Um, or you can just simply pour in some of the water from your old culture into your new culture. Another way is to put even more water in there so that they float on the top because they do float and just pour it in from there. I'm not gonna do that because I already have a bit too much water in here as is. And that's pretty much it on their setup. They don't really need much else. So once they're in your enclosure or they're outside, they're going to eat on organic plant material. They're going to eat some maybe leaf litter. They're gonna eat fold and fungus like we mentioned earlier. So what are they going to eat in their culture? They're probably just gonna eat some mold. So what you want is you can get some specialized food online. You can get some uncooked rice or you can simply get some yeast. I've heard 100% brewer, brewer's yeast. I have active dry yeast, which works just as fine. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just going to take some of it and you're just going to sprinkle it in just on top of some of this charcoal here. You don't wanna put a ton in there. You just want a little bit, just enough to um, feed some tiny, tiny bugs. You can also feed nutritious yeast like flakes. Some people feed fish flakes. I don't really recommend the fish flake thing. I just stick to the yeast or the rice. You can also feed them some like old veggies or cucumber or something. Sometimes I will throw in some greens or some cucumber in there, but today I'm just adding the yeast. Now within two to four weeks, your culture should be ready to harvest. I recommend at least having two cultures on hand so you can use one and just leave the other. I do not ever recommend using the whole culture in one enclosure. Even if you're not huge on animals, if you want this for a bioactive, if something happens to your bioactive setup or to your current setup and you need more springtails, you're going to have to do this all over again or get another starter colony and hope that they adapt to your enclosure. So to put them in the enclosure, you can simply take a piece of charcoal that has some springtails on it and just kind of tap it over where you want them. You can also just do the thing where you pour in some of the water and they will disperse on their own. And that's pretty much it. And there you go, that is pretty much it. They really don't need a lot of specialized care. It's pretty simple. They're a few bucks and really well worth it. And with time, you will have more springtails and you will know what to do with. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out or it was at least entertaining to you in some way. Don't forget to go follow me over on Instagram. The link will be down in the description below. Also follow my art account where I do custom digital pet pictures. The link is also in the description below. I do also have a Facebook group you can go join. It is Ollie Exotics Thriving Over Surviving. The link will be in the description below as well. As always, give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below if you are going to start your own culture of springtails or if you already have. Let me know if this helped you at all and subscribe to this channel if you are into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye.